What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weiss Schwartz back again. Part two of Guilty Gear set review. It's me, Andy. I don't know as Mr. Dolphin. Joined today by Mr. Climass. Hello. And then old standouts, Carmen and Ollie. Yo. What's up? Ollie is playing Strive while reviewing the set. Um, you can view that at a very small uh, thing in the bottom left, but... If you're someone who actually watches these uh, instead of just listen to them like most people, uh, you'll at least have something funny to watch in the bottom left. As yeah, we, we got to uh, review these cards. We, we checked the analytics. We got to really appeal to the Zoomer market here. So mm -hmm. this is our uh, surfer going on down there. Our train run or whatever it is. That, Subway surfer. Yeah, yeah. Subway surfer. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm so much of a boomer. I don't even know what it's called. Um, so. All right, Andy, kick us off. Yep. <laughs> All right, you know, I, I like her. She's like a hot, big yep. city goth girl. Yeah. Go wrong. That, you that's got her it. Design, uh, correct. Yep. Time traveling <laughs> musician. All right, I don't even need you to explain the lore on this one. Um, <laughs> it's all right there. When this is placed on stage from hand, look at two cards from top of your deck. Put them back in any order. I love it. And when this card is placed on stage from hand, you can Ooh. pay one clock yourself. Search for a level one or lower character. Top two, re Ricky. Yep. Good call. We love like Ricky's with scalable utility effects. It's, it's it's yeah, it's cool because she can also synergize with the uh, the ram. And she time travels, so she knows the future. Yep. So you, so you can top check, so you can play her down, top check, rearrange, and then um, play down ram. Yep. And you, and you know that you're going to hit on the ram top check. Yep. You can do whatever you want. You can do anything. You can, do, it you can do those effects in any yeah. order here. Yeah. Top two, rearrange. Make sure you're not going to clock a climax. Or, you know, you can do the Ricky effect first. Yeah. Get your plus, And then after you shuffle up. She, she can rearrange for Geo to. to hit. Yeah, she can rearrange. Check your rearrange is like legitimately like pretty useful in this. Yeah, if you're like, oh, I have my two memory, you like grab a geo because you already have your oh. like level one and then you like see a level one or higher like move it to the top for geo to hit it's, like really sick actually make sure your ninja president hits and you can switch them around make sure eddie hits yeah I mean, well wait no, that's, end, that's end of attack you there's no way to set that up it's like end or wait no i guess you could right if you're, yeah, if you're really end of it, if you do a first attack yeah you could that's like lots really of weird, ways all right, simple but strong. Moving on, uh, Biken, Avenging Swordswoman, damn by combo. If all of your characters are guilty gear, this gets thirty five hundred power in hand on core. Uh, at the beginning of your climax phase, you may put Resolve of Steel from your climax area in the waiting room and stand this card. So the way that that works is you play down the standby, you bring this out rested, uh, you immediately put the standby into your waiting room and stand this card specifically. Um, so you can have her out at level one and attacking in the front row immediately. Uh, for two soul, which is nice. And then she also has act. Uh, choose a character in your waiting room. Return it to your hand. Uh, choose one of your characters. And that character gets 2,000 power to on her turn. This card goes to the bottom of your deck. So if you do need to cash this out for something that, say, hmm, fills your whole front row. Like, <laughs> like Ram. Um, you're, like, not punished for, like, having the card on field. Because at least it exchanges for something else, right? The plus from hitting the standby to get this thing to board can turn into another card, which is nice, is the way that I would like to think of it. Um, I don't know if you play the combo. I don't know if you play, like, six standbys and two bars. I'm thinking you probably play four bars and four standbys just because you want to hit the bar to do the next ram because the combo's so ridiculously efficient um but that you could be my hunch you could play multi you could play like a weird split you could play like five three or something weird and have some copy of this in here but the other standby combo is actually <laughs> like Jeez. not as wonky and like just gives you hand so she's like know. a really good standby target in general yeah so. yeah i mean the fact that you just get a nine five card that can like exchange for a card a different card selectively and pump something else on the following turn is pretty good like i'm down 
Oh, fuck. oh shit, it salvages when you yes. say it. Yeah. It's like a field counter that actually pluses you back. Sort of. It's a. It's like a field buff that exchanges itself back because it's act, not a. It's not when your oh, character's oh. attacked. Yeah. But I see what you mean. It's but, still, it's but, still yeah, good. that is really it's good. With, good. Um, it is really good with Ramathal. Yeah, the fact that it gets itself off the board and does literally anything useful um, is like really important, and it's like selective too. Uh, sneakily, I think this is like really good. I think it reads wonkier than an old play. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ollie, you got Saul. All That's right. Cool. Saul, savior of the world. Uh, once it's played from stage to hand, you get to heal. Uh, when this card attacks, you can put one card in your hand in the waiting room and pay one stock. When the door climaxes in your climax zone, uh, when it attacks, you have two or more of the guilty gear characters. They pay costs if you do. Deal four damage to your opponent, and then you can also pay two ditch one when this card's battle point is reversed to put the top card of your opponent's deck in the clock. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I like his flavor. I like the uh, the flavor text. I'm a self-employed guy trying to enjoy his vacation. <laughs> I like again. Are, that... Aren't we all? Yep. Aren't we all? Yeah. I like again that the attack combo, it's on attack. It's not once per turn. So if you restand them, you can do it again. Yep, you can burn again, and, and it's, the, the burn is itself. cheap. The burn is cheap, so you could probably like reasonably do that and restand. Uh, especially if you only had like two, like if you only could get two souls for some reason, you can like quote unquote triple combo and get an extra like swing of the restand. Just something to think about if you have like stock, but like you buried the I mean, salt or something. I was talking before saying like you could use like you theoretically could do two of the uh, um restand event from your level in one turn. I don't know what the numbers up, are in this, but like that's a lot of damage. If you it's have three good. of these, it's a lot of hand to do, especially right? if you fumio them. Yeah, that's. It. This card definitely benefits from Fumio shoving in any amount of junk to try to stick the four. Yeah, I think it's good. I don't know if it's as good as Ram, but it's definitely good. <laughs> it's oh, like, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not as good as Ram. It's still expensive. Like, burn four, the burn four itself is cheap, but the, uh, the pay to ditch one, if you're doing that multiple times for the guaranteed damage but i like it though because if you stick that one four right there's a better chance that these like guaranteed <clears throat> kicks like are just game sealers right like yeah you have to deal one less damage to actually uh finish the game because you just have guaranteed which is pretty nice but i might be just high on that in general from playing a lot of slime where your primary finisher nowadays is like Checkmating people with the Milam Claw Kicker. So. But it seems good. I like it. All right. Next card. This is John. Go ahead. All right. So we got a good old 0, zero 500. Good old ONG, Mr. Butterfly Boy. And his big ass fans. Now we got Act Rest. Uh, she's one of the characters. Gets plus 1K. Uh, also, it's a brainstorm. Uh, it's, it's a check three brainstorm. Spammable check three brainstorm. Ooh, it's spammable. And check it's three better. add ditch. Um, it's it's still yeah. like <laughs> these can be pretty strong, but I don't I know like if spammable you, check threes. Yeah. If you uh, I think that's the best spammable. I mean, it's a lot of deck speed. It's a lot, a lot of deck speed. I mean, you go pretty quick, but I feel like you're stock gated in this set. I, mm, I don't know. Everything know. seems like it can cost a million stock at the end, like you can cash out, but I don't know how that's gonna like feel. Yeah, like how, how many how many stock like based things do I actually want to do outside of my finisher? But I don't know. If you if you have a leaner deck and can use this a lot, uh Bamable Check 3 is really fucking broken. Uh alright. Next. Back I just realized Anji has a, a trait called fan. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, next tier, we got Biken Samurai Slasher. Um, when you play him from your hand or when he's put in your waiting room from the field, you can discard a Guilty Gear character or put a Guilty Gear from your hand into your clock to look at three from the top of your deck. Choose any card among them, put it in your hand. So on play and on death, you can clock a character from your hand to look at three for anything. Really good at accelerating you to Only level a one. C plus. I, I don't know. It can grave. take a climax too. I think if you are playing any more than four That's standby, solid. this card probably makes it into your deck. And maybe even with four as a one of, this is fine. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I This is a card I actually have to play with. I don't know how it works with four standby. I think if I was playing anything more than four, like a hybrid deck, like a six, two, or even like a five, three, I'd probably try to play this. Because I'd want to get to one as quickly as possible to fill you know, and fill my grave at the same time. So this like rips me into standbys or like you know cards I need to set up my standby stuff. If I'm playing like a anything anything more than four, I don't know if it makes it in with four. But what the card five seems three. Good. That sounds kind of juicy. Five three is uh five three is like that's probably like the I don't know man. Five standby three bar. Five standby three bar. It's like. Like a little bit more standbys, but like because you only you don't really the care. The bars will come in your hand. Yeah, I think it's probably fine, but I don't know. I, the way that I'm thinking of it is like I can I can death grip my standby all day. Um, I would rather have an easier time getting uh getting more rams off after the fact. So I'd probably want more bars, but I don't know. There's lots of testing needs to be done. There's lots Always of cooking. Struggling. Lots of lots of cooks need to be in the kitchen. We need many cooks. Some would say too many. All right, next card. Uh, this is a 1175 standby target. Uh, at least this one doesn't make Woo! me want to kill myself. Uh, wow. But I'm, I'm not going to read it. me want to kill myself. I'm not going to read it. Next card. 2-1 uh, Jacko. All your level 3 or higher cards in front of this get 2k power. You can rest this to choose one of your characters, and that character gets 1,000 power until end of turn. And if your memory has one or less cards, choose any character in your waiting room, put it in your memory. Wow, okay. This is the assist that I want, actually. If I am a deck that is resolving... Um, if I am a deck that is resolving memory type effects in the early game, and I still need them for my finishers, and for some reason I'm not playing the RAM one that just hands it to me, this is the one I'm playing. I think generally this is pretty good. I would I would take 2k plus spot 1k any day with no extra line of text and then it just has a free line of text. Because for some reason this tension build the effect seems to just be free. They just yeah, throw it around. Yeah, it's cost something else. Mm -hmm. Always they, free. They really just want you to have it. Mm -hmm. On a more important note, does Jacko get an SP? Yes, yeah. I think Every, this is she, her SP. Oh, Every, please tell yeah. me, is she posing in it? She doing the no, pose? No, they did not do the pose. All the main roster have SPs in the in the That's stat. a missed opportunity. Yeah, but I do believe this What's is her SP. What's she holding? What card. is that? It's a mask. Yeah, it's her mask. Yeah. When she wears her mask, she goes into her Jacko mode. Mm-hmm. When she's not I didn't wearing even know her she mask, had a mask. But she's a she's gear. Yeah, when she's not wearing her mask, she's um Soul's wife. Mm-hmm. So, so what are gears? Are they like? Weapons. Well, it's buddy, kind of like this, let me refer like a you to a three-hour-long like uh, lecture on uh, we got we got a lot of ground to cover before you can learn about gears. Um, we got a lot of a lot of things you got to learn about. I'll link that in the description. Uh, never mind. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit much. It's a it's a lot. It's a lot. Guilty I'll, gear. I'll, I'll just play with the cards and have no. They're idea. basically yeah. they're basically genetically modified people. Yep. They're like super weapons, but okay. they can really be anything. Um, even robots, because they literally just yeah, even do whatever Gundam. they want. Yeah, Robokai. All right, next. I was talking about justice or yeah, justice. Just ice. Yeah. Uh, I read that, so Ollie, this is you. you get action. Uh, all right, because I, I just finished that round. Uh, two one Axel. When this a car attacks, it gets X power. Next to a number of your other Guilty Gear characters, you have times 1,500. And then you can put one card from your hand in your waiting room and put one Guilty Gear character from your memory into your waiting room. This gets 2,500 power and the following ability until end of turn. 
When this card's battle opponent comes reverse, you may put that character on top of your opponent's deck. He'd be big. That's a big Swing two. Swing for 15. 12-5 plus another 2-5. Yeah, 15. I like I like this as a way to like um you just get rid of to stuff. sit on the field. You, you know, it's like yeah. it's like a memory kick counter, but it's like on your turn. Have you um do, do you know but like do, a, have, yeah. have you seen the dude bro you look huge meme? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a there's there's bro, an axle you look one. Huge. There's an axle one that's also really good. It's like <laughs> Mike, you look huge. <laughs> Yeah, that this is reads like generically good, right? Like Yeah, it's just this remove this is like I my opponents are playing big things at level two. I will remove the things. It doesn't even have to kill like it's not even like an like an early play killer, right? It just hits whatever you want. Yeah, it it's kills always anything, big. yeah. It's just always big. I card like good. that you don't have to like discard the card and use the meter to get big. Like he's already twelve five on his own when you attack. With yeah, him. you only need if you need to hard remove it. You, if you, if you need to hard remove, it gets you like that little extra push you need to get like bigger than their three two, and it, it like turns on your like top deck effect. Yeah, that's solid. All right, Nick. and he's handsome too. <laughs> oh, what do you see him in jorts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god, man. oh thank I can't god, wait. Got rid of those. John, go ahead. What a nerf. <laughs> oh. All right, Look at we got that climate. That's a, what is going on here? No, we're all free the, now. We are. All, oh <laughs> my God, Rikio, baby, we bring yeah. it up back. We're spooky. <laughs> oh, we got we're gonna go all three, two, Eno, crushing power. It's a ten, what is a ten five? Looks like I got oh, it's just two abilities on it. All right. So when this card is placed from the hand or by the effect of Happy Chaos Tome of Origin, you may choose a freedom in your waiting room and return it to your hand. I'm assuming that also plays with it all. Yeah. Uh, when yeah, this card attacks, if the climax is in your climax area and you have two or more other characters, choose one of the following and perform it. Uh, it gets plus 15 to the end of turn, and you may return all cards of your opponent's waiting room to the deck. If you do so, your opponent shovels the deck. Or two, you may pay the cost. If you do, deal two. And this can come down early from the yeah. MBK. It's just like weird merge. Oh, basically. okay. I assumed. Yeah, it comes down early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's not like the most crazy thing, but. The, the lore, fine. the yeah. lore is they fuse together. Yep. I love the art. I, I love like the what's it called? Once like black and white, like that. Um, like negative or something. Monica. Like like mm -hmm. negative. Yeah. yeah. Like I like that art style, and I like the climax art. That's really cool. I have no idea what's happening there, but that's it's pretty Evangelion. Dope. That's um. That's <laughs> Evangelion. <laughs> yeah, it's third, Evangelion. It's third impact. It's third impact. Evangelion. It seems kind of cool. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's very good. I think it's a lot. I, I think. I think the uh, change is like really hand costed. Uh, oh. I remember yeah, yeah, correctly, but we'll get to it when we get to blue. It's not that far away. All righty, next card. Back to Andy. All right, we got my girl, Jacko. Um. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is an event or guilty gear, add it to your hand, discard. And put a guilty gear from your hand to waiting room. When it is played on the stage from your hand, you can discard guilty gear character. If you do reveal two from the top of your deck, on not choose an event or character, goes to your hand. Yeehaw! It's like a cowgirl, kind of. I hate opponent choose. Opponent choose is always so bad. I think like, you'd rather play the... The, the green double filter. I think I'd rather have the blind draw from a cowgirl, but yeah, uh, I don't like I don't like the other part. But it is a console. I'll get in the C minus. It is a double filter. It's just a bad one. You have to have the you guys are, the skin you guys pack are getting double filters that, earlier. Holly, the, uh, the black elf elf. Do you have to have a, the skin pack for that uh, skin? It maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, because I don't have that one. I just use the one that looks like Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that in like the corner of my eye over there, and I was like, ah, I've never seen that skin before. All right. Uh, next. Oh, banger card alert. Uh, it's all prototype gear. Uh, all of your characters in front of this get the following ability. This card cannot be chosen by your opponent's effects. This is a level zero, by the way. And when your character trigger check reveals a card with a soul trigger in its icon, choose one of your characters that gets 1,500 power. Remember the part where we were playing standby? 
remember the part where we were trying to play Ram at two and we didn't want to get Angie changed? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. This card's cracked. This is like the the Saki from uh, Zombie Land had this first line of text and like a other line of text that didn't matter. These are like two really cracked effects, like on one card. Why is this a zero and there's like no cost or level restriction to the hex proof? Because it's a good card. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's it's yeah. A plus. I won't yeah. give it the S just because it's like a, a it's like a support card. It's not like a standout card, but it's like you you like play one of this in every single guilty gear deck, like at least. Yeah, it just seems insane. Like it's just good. So what's, it's just raw what's good. the goal? Just to have one of this in one brainstorm down? Yeah. At all times? Yeah, pretty much. Whatever you need. You play it when you need to. Yeah, you, it's literally like, oh, my opponent has a defensive counter? No, you don't. My opponent has an anti-change counter? No, you don't. Um, because two lanes of Hexproof is effectively your full board. If you play it out correctly. And it's a level yeah, zero. Yeah, it is. It's free. It's free. Also, like, just spot 15 randomly every time you trigger is nuts. Um, that's, like, really, really good. If you've ever had yeah. the uh, misfortune of sitting across from standby Nijigasaki, you know exactly what I mean. Um, like, the... the, the... They, well, they, I was thinking that, too, but, I mean, they got, like, a lot of twin driving going on, too. Yeah, like, it's still probably annoying. Probably a higher density of soul triggers. Yeah, it's still very annoying, but it's not, like, super main game plan like it was for there. But the fact that this is on a zero, you just puke this thing down. You can always... It's easy to grab. Um... Alrighty, next card. Ollie, go ahead. Uh, we got this one zero Axel. When it's placed from stage to hand, choose one of your opponent's characters that gets the following ability until the end of your opponent's next turn. Uh, this card cannot move to another position stage. And it's a level one bomb. It's Nolan. But it's a uh, reverse bomb instead of a cost bomb. Or a killer. Yep. Or you know what? E against attack. other... Against other um, Rams, gear yeah. decks too, like if the Ram deck ten, like if, if that's like the big thing, stunning <laughs> their Ram stunning the Ram so it can't move up is very good, yeah, because it has to be in center position to go off. It's just dead if it sits there. That's cute. All right, next, John, go ahead. Okay, we got a one zero bike and the Delilah together forever. It's a DLC so story. It is. So, continuous, if, if all your characters, or well, if you're playing the game, this is a two, plus 2k, so it's going to be a 6k pretty much at all times. Um, one, put a climax from your hand to the waiting room when it's placed on the stage, and pay the cost if you do swap. We love a climax swap that's a yep. profitable attacker as well. Yeah, it's just, it's fine. Like <laughs> it, sits, yep. it sits at 6k. I'm surprised it sits at 6 and isn't just like on, a, on turn plus 2,000. Yeah, they made it good. Yeah, yeah they, they're just like, this card gets solid. to be good. A lot of these have been like, I don't know, every time a set gets one of these, like, it does usually see play. Like, uh, I remember the, the scene on in Sal was like always really good because that card was also like a 6, 7k attacker that was also a climax swap. It's really good when you're like in a set that loops combo, but it's like just good otherwise if it's in a major color. Only the level you know, one is seems, only a drawback if it's not a major color for your deck. Seems nice for the bar standby deck you were theorizing here. Oh yeah, uh, being able to like switch into the standby at level two to like set it up, like make sure you can always get the um, uh, Ramathal set up. But then, like if you already have it set up, you can switch it into a bar. You were in the infinite. If you don't only. have it. He hit you it's with the really, infinite. Really hard to. Oh yeah, I know. I just look over and I just see like, yep, yep. That's the, that's the two K. That's the two D. That's the that's the bomb. Yep, there it goes. All right. But yeah, back to twice. I agree. Yeah, I think it's good for that deck. <coughs> All right, next. Uh, back to me here. Yep, we got go Angie. Angie, charismatic dance. And boy, uh, when this is placed on the stage from your hand, he gets X power, equal number Guilty Gears times 500. And when it's bad, during his battle, when the damage you receive is canceled, he comes back to your hand. I love the pop-back cards. Um, 
not particularly on like a 7k attacker though. I think this is pretty dog shit. Yeah, it has to be it's on not the worst, but you know. These cards are like that that line of text is really dumb, but you have to have it on a like serviceable card for it to be, you know, truly dumb. I think it's good at level zero, like where Yeah, I mean like on the rain it's like most relevant. broken. Like, you know. Alright, next. Eno, Megalomania. When this card attacks, this card gets plus X power until end of turn. X is equal to the number of other Guilty Gear characters you have times 500. So this will be plus 2K uh, on attack. So it'll be 6-5. Now this one. This one's a doozy. This is an act. Pay four. Put a card from your hand into your waiting room and put one Guilty Gear character from your memory into your waiting room. Return all of your opponent's level three or lower characters in their center stage to their hand. You hate Ooh. Overlord. I hate Overlord. Get fucked, Overlord. Um, you you're gonna this... have a bad time. Yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> Very good. Uh. Wow. Yeah, and it's Megalomania. <laughs> you see, you got everything, dude. It all comes together. Stands Undertale. Yeah, the, liter literally get fucked, Overlord. Get fucked, anyone yeah, doesn't trying target. to do anything. No target. For an effect like this. You you really won't care that much about that four stock on, on a one it. zero, no less on a one zero. Even if they hit two first, or they hit, yeah, even if they hit. Also, two like first. even for the card being dead in every matchup, you don't use it. It's still a six five swing. It's like not an unusable card. You would play this even if like it didn't have that first line of text at all, and it was the same power. Um, this is like the best tech card for like the meta we're in. Uh, so that is the mother of all tech cards right there you play it if you're playing guilty gear you and you have red cards in your deck you put a copy of this in every single time yeah it's like there's a, so little requirement you just need a slot a single slot yeah so john you haven't been around for a while but do you know what the bone daddy does are you familiar I, i've heard people talk about it but i never actually looked it up I just okay well it. when they resolve the combo he becomes untargetable unreversible the card across from him can also not be reversed you literally can't touch him he eats all these markers and then the next turn uh when they slam the bar again every time they slam the bar they heal by the way um the the markers all go to memory and for every marker he sends this is after you know he's untouchable hex proof unreversible you can't adachi him all that stuff so they're gonna stick under them no matter what they send those to memory, and then for every one they send to memory, they blow up a card on your board anywhere. They can hit back row. And then for every event that's in their memory every turn, they get pay one, ditch one, burn one at end of turn up to five times because they can play five events. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the, the fact that this, your opponent can combo and Eins becomes an untouchable monster, and you say, I'm not, mm, you know, goodbye. And because your opponent spends so many resources to do that, and they're usually, like, pretty on the back foot in terms of hand and stuff like that. Even though you give them three hand back, they probably literally can't do anything the following turn. Um, because they, like, lost all their things that they used to spawn the Eins. Yeah, so it's, like, all in, but if you... Yeah, you know, that lit thing, literally, you Eno Overlord, they lose. Uh, unless they're, like, heavily having every... If they, they have to have everything go right, and they have to have, like, the perfect, like, follow-up again or sack into it. But, like... You just literally win the game off this card against Overlord. What about what about other decks, like other early play spam decks? What about like a Conan Amarine or like something else? that's like it's not going to do anything against like Muron probably against like Conata. Stuff, but... I would I would not want to use it against Conata or Muron. I don't think, um, because you have the power if you're playing Ram. I, I say like if we're playing Ram. Say we're playing the best deck that we could play in Guilty Gear, which probably includes Ram. Um, Ram gets really big, and there's a lot of ways to pump even more power over Ram. Murin can back up to 15-5. <laughs> you can easily clear 15-5. Um, and because you're hexproof, you don't care about Slime's other counters. But I wouldn't care about it there. Kanata is very similar. She can get up to uh, like 15 uh, I believe, right? Because she have if you have both brainstorms down, he sits at twelve. Just three k counter. Yeah, also fifteen. So I think you're fine just challenging because you don't care if your Luciferos die, right? And they still challenge at thirteen k. 
So, um, and if you give them the raw hand back with Kanata's, then they can, because they picked up the counters again, they can just change again and heal. So I wouldn't do it against Slime or Murin. I would do it against Overlord. I think this is a one card fuck you overlord um which is good i think cards like this actually need to exist when you print when you print stupid shit like eins you need to have stupid shit like this um to have people have something yeah. against it um i mean yeah probably not against like conan Amari. like i feel like it needs to be like really because they're just gonna play that shit back down yeah and Same in fact like Mirons, it's, it's even worse for you because they'll get the heal very easily because they they always pick up like counter counter helmet like other card, right? So like they can just change into it again. If you give them raw like, cards and hand back. Overlord's not gonna be able to replay like their whole field again. No. Nope. Like what what else would this hit other than Overlord? Is there anything else that this like tangentially like if you can could throw this good against? You can throw this in any eight guilty gear deck. Alive. Yeah, eight stand my hall alive, yeah. Because the Lunas can get massive. You can fuck over eight stand my hall alive. Okay, so that's like two decks in the meta. And it's kind of yep. like useful again. And for any other deck, right? Like we're saying like, yo, Ram hits high power we, and there's Hexproof. We don't have to worry about this. We don't have to worry about that. If you're not playing that kind of deck, um, you can just like get rid of all your opponent's stuff and like stop them from doing anything. It is a sledgehammer. Uh, it is the sledgehammer response to interaction, if nothing else. Right? So I'm sure you'll find a use for it somewhere. Yeah. Card just good. Like it doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter what's in the meta. It matters what's not in the meta. That would do it, right? Like, yeah. If it's good against like random like rogue decks or like decks that you will see once every three regionals, it's insane. Like if it saves you from one thing, then it's worth the spot. She can That's all really I can see. Like this. Because like the floor, the floor is pretty high on it too. Just like yeah. being a decent attacker on its own. Sorry, I was feeling good because this L felt that all he's playing against is like, I don't know, it's doing the same things that I was working on. Oh, they're, they're cooking. Yeah, well, I see they're six. I was looking at like, I was like, you could really just 6P into that whole thing and do it again, huh? And it's like, yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> you can just keep going. All Dude, right. you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm thinking, Carmen? What? We need to do a follow-up to the uh, Megalovania overlord video we did yeah but it's just this and oh, with this sucks. card um, <laughs> and, and you, it, you just instantly see the death screen that video did age better than it released it released and it didn't do very well and i was like oh that took a lot a long time but, but it got some views all right next card uh ollie go ahead <clears throat> we got jacko forever elysium driver uh, if you do not have another guilty gear character, this card cannot stand during your stand phase, and you can ditch a card in your ha hand and put the standby climax into your uh waiting room. When this attacks, you can pay cost. If you have two others, you can search up to two guilty gear characters and add them to your hand. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, so this is what I, I was talking about. Yeah, so you know how like Ram takes up a lot of slots. And, like, you know, the other cards are, like, you have a bunch of these cool off attackers. But, like, you know, you kind of want to field your combo, right? Well, what if you just, like, plus two off one combo? Because you get the plus off the standby. You play the standby, right? And then you get the uh, you get the plus off this. And, you know, even if you have the Lucifer's down, they get the soul and stuff when you play the Climax. So uh, you don't even have to worry about sacking it off. This is an uncommon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Like, like you can only resolve one. That's why it's a plus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean if if you could resolve multiple times, this card would be banned before you even resolve the light of day. Um, I think I think this is exactly the kind of combo you want to be playing with something like Ram. Like a just a you know, lower impact, but like, you know, it's selective, gets you there to your next thing, because you're the whole standby you're playing is just a vehicle to get your RAM on board at two. You know, it's yeah. all you're playing it for. So you just like get your cards and go and you get out of there and you stop trying to play the quote unquote standby strategy. You just resolve this if you can. Get your uh get your cards and move on. Get yeah, I mean this just gets what you want. Like if it, if if a card lets you get what you want, then pff, it's it's insane. Like, especially in a deck like that where like once you get level two, like you cook. <clears throat> 
Yeah. I love it. It's very, it's like yeah. the card, really I think like it was this. a soul. The one yeah, from the, the starter TD. deck that was a, the, uh, like, Zack and Yuki sort of effect. But I mean, in standby, it has, like, other implications, too. Like, if you're playing, like, eight standby or something, just the fact that you, like, end two cards out of your deck, that makes your, uh, you're more likely to trigger standbys then, which is, like, a big deal. It also filters your hand, too, additionally. It is, it is during the combat step, but it's a way to get another heavy card out of your hand um, if you're going to, like, trigger another standby. Like, not even thinking That's, about the Yeah, you can deck. set up future standbys, but yeah. If we're thinking about, like, an eight standby deck, that would be a play you could go for. This art is very funny. Oh, yeah, yeah getting put just in the... Lure, just lure is scooping them. Yep. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, that was I remember I only did that. This is you, John. Go ahead. All right, so we got good old zero zero Jacko, right to save the world. So zero zero five hundred. Um, when your other battle, when when your other character's battle opponent becomes reversed, choose one of your guild of your characters. That character gets plus five hundred. Uh, put one card in your hand to the waiting room and rest this card. Choose a level zero or lower character from your waiting room and put it any place on the stage. Was a spawner. Spawns level zeros. Yeah. Man, if only Nanoha had this effect and not the the version where you have to tap two. Um, this can be good, but uh, uh, I don't think you need it. Um, the repeated spawn is better than it reads, but it I don't think you need the card. You could continuously order. get the um, go to memory drop searcher. Yes, you can. Back. It's great for like cards an, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like instead of running the uh, the one that like taps itself to give you a memory, you could just tap this to get a like, get your filter card, on the card field out. And... You can ditch literal unplayables with this, like climaxes or events, to get attackers at at the baselines. Like the baseline of why this card's pretty big, pretty good. It, it seems okay. Like, I'm not really super crazy about it. But yeah, I, I mean, understand why it's good. It's sneaky. It's just like fine. All right. Uh, back to Andy. Go ahead. All right. Got another Eno. I don't know if she's crying or her like face is cracking off there, but it looks cool. Um. When this card is placed on stage from hand, choose up to one of your opponent's characters, blink it. Um, and then when this is put in your waiting room for the stage, if you have one or less cards in your memory, you can choose uh, Megalovania or itself in your waiting room, put it into your memory. I don't know how crazy I am about the blink effect right now. I think not that's very metagame lot. dependent, and it's not doing much right now. Um... <coughs> But the fact that this can, like, it, it makes the card, the megalomania we were talking about earlier even more playable, right? Because in the matchups where it's not good, you can just send it into your memory. Yeah, or just, like, I don't know. This this just reads so to me helpful. as a, it's a blinker that gives you tension, and I don't know if you need that, but it's, I, I think like if it's you, a tech card. If you want the blinker, then that's great, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's but, a tech card if you want a blink. I think that's the uh I think that's the long and the short of it. Yeah, it doesn't look anything crazy. Alright. Axel disaster relief. Uh when this card is put into the waiting room for the stage, if your memory has one of those cards, you may choose an Axel time manipulator or Axel disaster relief in your waiting room and put it into your memory so it can send itself. Uh which is really cool because if it's act effect, pay one sack this, check top four, add a character. So you can pay one and crack this to get deck speed, like you would with any copy of this card, but then immediately send it to memory. So you could read this as pay one, send this card to memory, check four. In a way. It's not exactly accurate, but... That makes me like it a lot better. But it is... You're right that you can read it that way. Yeah, but you know, that is a way you could read it. I think it's fine. I don't know where you find space for this, because there's, uh, <coughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a... But, like, you know, if you, if you have it, I guess if you're playing more into the well, standby, again, like, you want you want more stock outs, so this is probably good. But I like the Axel time, time manipulator just on its own. 
and so this like is just a good card to go with it yeah i don't even think you need that big of numbers like you could just run like two and one yeah, like you could run one and one who cares run one and one yeah they send them send himself matter. the other card's fine yeah. you, you need the cards they work totally fine together i think a one one split of that's actually like really comfy maybe maybe I mean, I think it's totally solid. Probably two in one. Stance. Well, whatever. There's just a lot of really good zeros. It's, it's becomes hard to find slots for them. All right, moving on. Ollie, go ahead. All right, we got this Axel. Uh, pay one, put the top card of your deck into your clock. Return this card to your hand. The beginning of your opponent's attack phase. You may uh, choose one of your other gifted key characters and return it to your hand. And you bounce us back to your hand. Yep, it's Bell Ricky. Um, I don't think you need this in Guilty Gear, but uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, have it. I don't think it's a bad card. I just don't think you need it. I'm gonna assume, yeah. I think you have cards that can stay on the board, so you're not like Don Machi, where you're level zero, so anemic and terrible that you just want to. Shoot yourself to level ones that you never have to play it again. Um, I don't think that's the case with Guilty Gear. I think you can actually play your level zero out. All right, next. Uh, John, go ahead. All right, we got Anji in Pursuit. It's a zero zero two five. Um, <coughs> When this card is placed on the stage from the hand, you may pay the cost, which is ditch one and pay one. If you do, choose one of your opponent's characters and bounce it. It's a drop bouncer. Yeah. We've had drop search. We had drop salvage, but now we have drop bounce. Is there anything like uh, in the meta where you would love to do this on? Not when you have the costless yeah. hexproof to front. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. And there's no reason to have if you can stop your opponent from interacting with you at all, it's probably better than paying for a bouncer. But it is a level zero that you can grab at any time and resolve it any time. Weird so to have a on a tech. level zero though. Yeah. That that's why I was asking because it was like if there's a, something <clears> like uh, that uh, that Eno wouldn't hit. Would you rather play this card? But the Eno's is so like good against like everything. Yeah, the Eno's. This is a little bit more. A uh, little bit more. What what's the word I'm looking for here? A little bit more precise than the Eno. Niche. Yeah. This would be a precise tech where the Eno is like big nuke. I think you, I think you need the nuke. Yeah. It's just weird to me. Like I, I like like the um like the three twos are like draw ditch bounce. I think those are pretty like nifty like tech cards. Well they're also two like, soul beaters. This is just like a level zero. It's it's like weird. Like early in the game, you're not going to be wanting to do that. But it's an interesting combination of effects. I will give it that. All right, back to handy. All right, uh, bike and campfire conversation. Uh, during your turn, if you have two or more other guilty gears, this gets two k and six k on on turn. Uh, on attack, it's a level 2 killer. It gets to 12k against level 2s. It's, you know, meta-dependent. No more Alice. No more Viking. At least not this Viking. Is this just, like, just booty butt compared to the Axel? Um, I mean, it, like, it's it's more to hate on standby cards at 1. <coughs> oh, this level is a 1. Two's level 2s at 1, yeah. It's a different kind of card. All right, next is a memory kick counter. It, whatever. Uh, not going to rate that. Oh, my God. Not going to rate this one either. 2 2 11K. That's cool. Um, he's just an ordinary merchant. Um, all right. Outrage Mark 2. 2 2 counter. If you do not have a Guilty Gear character, this card cannot be played from your hand. Choose up to two of your Guilty Gear characters, and they get the following ability. This card cannot become reversed. So pay two to effectively save two of your lanes. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, like if it, if that's all it does, then like, are we ever? I guess assuming like we're gonna like talk about this and like playing like the the RAM package, right? 
but yeah, but I mean, you don't, you don't care, care about your Lucifer's dying. Yeah, this you, is you paying like two versus paying three. Versus if you're at three, you can just play another ram. You don't care. I'd rather well, play a power also backup too, like, to save my ram. Because I, I, I was thinking, like, yeah, you can save the um, the one zeros that burn three. <coughs> right? You can save them both with that, but, like, you just get you those could just back. play another climax down, you get them back for free. And you're paying two and a card to save them with their one zeros, like. Yep. I'd rather use. Yeah, I think I agree with Carmen. Else. You 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 save the you save the middle lane and then. Go that off just again. Gives you back the other two. Not a not a terrible card though. And we already talked about this. This is the red version of the free stand event. Um, so yeah, oh, okay. it's here. All right, moving. literally just the same thing. Yep, literally exactly the same thing with yep. a different name. You can play eight if you want. I, I don't know why you would. In fact, I don't know why you'd ever play more than two of this. You got all game to level a single one by level three. I think you'll be fine with like a two count. Maybe even one. I don't know. I don't know how consistent one would be. I guess um, one you, you, you could just wait till it. we get the. You just okay. wait till we get to the uh, our deck techs. I, I got something planned for those. All right, let's move on to blue here. Um, I read that one and we skipped. So, Ollie, go ahead. You get the Kai. Uh, okay, we got this 1-0 Kai combo. It is a 5,500 if you have two or more other Guilty Gear characters. And on attack, if you have the pants, uh, you have the pants in your climax area, you can either check for, uh, add a Guilty Gear character to your hand from among them, or you can salvage level to your higher guilty gear character. Mogros with upside, you say? Yeah, yeah just just seems good. <laughs> yeah, it is a super simple and easy to use combo. You do whatever you want, just like Kai. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you need the deck speed, like on first deck, you go that. If you're looping your combo into deck two and you don't want to hit on your deck, you can just salvage <laughs> level threes. Because there's not a lot of level twos to grab. Like, there's the Axel we saw that was pretty good. Um, but, like, in general, there's not many level twos that you want to pick up. So it's mostly uh, taken one. Which is fine. So is Kai, like, the other main character? Is he, like, yes. the foil to yeah. uh, yes. Soul, he's, bad guy? He is, is the, the yep. boy he's scout. Like, he's the Ken, the Soul's Ryu. Yeah. Yep. So is Kai, like, a bad guy? Or is he, like, a... No, just, no the, the thing is they're both soul. good guys. They're both good guys. They're just friendly rivals. Well, technically, Soul's a bad guy, but you technically, know. he's Soul bad guy. Yeah, you got. You got to play Order Soul to be Soul good guy. Mm-hmm. What's Kai? Is he Kai good guy? Is that his name? Yeah, and Kai Keys. Uh, Kai Keys guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> Keys guy. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I mean, look at four or salvage. Pretty, pretty good on power creep level one combo. I think. Um, which is good. This will probably be like the go-to starting point for anybody who wants to play 1k1 Guilty Gear and not play some sort of standby RAM thing. Moving on. Uh, this is John. Go ahead. All right, we got 3-2 Fowls, the Nutty Doctor. What a name. Uh, 3-2 9k. Uh, if you have four more, a full field early play. During your turn, if you're playing the game, he's an 11k. Uh, and he is a stock healer. Yeah. Yeah. Just seems good. Like it's Aqua again. Yep. They're fine. They're good. They're good. He's like the um, he he him and <laughs> um, him and May are like the only characters I knew like coming into this. I'm glad he got a card. I like him. I like the bag on the head. Very oh, he cool. has he has more than one card. Let me tell you, Faust has some godless cards in here. Oh, nice. All right, moving on. Back to Andy. Go ahead. Hey, Happy Chaos. Um, This guy's pretty cool looking. Uh, When your Climax is played on your field, you can pop him back to your hand, give 2,000 power to a character. So it's just like a typical, you know, pop back card you play in standby decks. Beginning of your opponent's attack step, you can pay one, move him to your back row. Interesting combination of effects. So, okay. you know, no matter yeah. what, I guess something can happen. If you're not playing a Climax, he can still run to your back row. 
the flavor. Oh, okay, so like you, yeah. you play you play him like turn one, you like swing with them and pull him to your back row so you can pop back later, I guess. Yep. I don't uh, know what the flavor is, but he seems okay, uh, I guess. He shoots gun. Yeah. That's the flavor. He goes, he goes, ball runs. He goes yeah. Deus Ex Machina and then you die. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I think this card's actually really good. Okay, so you gotta think about that Ram deck, right? That Lucifero gets spawned. You're playing standby. Um, like, you know, you can put that two K like somewhere, it bounces back to hand, then spawn the the minions in the left and right lanes. Um, you obviously have use for it with the level one standby combo. Again, the the Jacko's actually kind of small, like seventy five. I think that in this Ram deck, this card actually has like a lot of use, and it it like doubles as a fifth sixth opener. I'm definitely gonna play with it. I forgot this card existed until I was making the set review. And I was thinking about the standby stuff, and I saw it, and I was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of pop back and stuff going on. So, so, so what's the what's the appeal? Is it the two thousand power that's important? Or yeah, it it's just that it's just that you're you can cycle. So if you open this card, this card can literally cycle your hand all game realistically with the way you play the deck, right? Or like, say you open this. Well, you what do, what do you mean cycle your hand? Okay, so like, say you open this in your opening hand. You're playing standby bar, right? This card comes down. Uh, you play it in your opener. You can use it to attack multiple times early. So, like, maybe if you're going second, you can use this to try field and get your plus. Uh, so you run this back to the back row. On the next turn, you play your standby combo, return this card to your hand. <coughs> you play it again at level two to help you win board on your first level two turn where you stand by the ram. It comes back again. And then when you finally play your ram combo, you can bounce this back to your hand before you spawn the minions to give ram an additional 2k power to play around memory kick counters. Um, because she'll only be 14, this would send her to 16, which would be out of range of any memory kick counter in the meta. Uh, without having to worry about, like, triggering with the Hexproof Assist. So I think the way that your play patterns will work, this card will actually be really cool in the deck. So I'm going to start with it. I don't know if it'll pan out that way, but conceptually, it sounds, sounds like it'll work out it can, good. It sounds like a pretty versatile card, yeah. I think the two effects come together better than they probably initially look, but we can move on. All right, this is and back to Andy, right? This is you. Uh, or no, it's mine. Okay. Yeah. Faust, beginning operation. When G Cancellor Field is placed on your climbing chair, if you have another Guilty Gear character, look at the top card of your deck. Choose up to one Guilty Gear character revealed to your opponent. Put it in your hand and put the rest in the waiting room. Uh, so if you have multiple of this down and you, like, reveal a Climax, you mill it. So, like, you can't, like, whiff all of them at once. And then when your Climax is placed in your Climax area, choose one of your characters to get to 2,000 power until end of turn. It's a really shitty plus, but can at least go off multiple times with a level zero. It's kind of cute, I think, right? Like It's kind of cute, but I, it's probably not very good. It's yeah, super cute. I like these better when they mill or do literally anything. Or do anything else, yeah. All right, Ollie, you get the testament. Oh, the base card. All right, uh, this is a 2 1 testament. Uh, on play, you can salvage. This was. Uh, yeah, you can salvage a character, then discard a card from your hand. And then as an act, you can pay two, ditch two, and put a guilty character from your memory into your waiting room and rest this to burn two twice. Or, sorry, burn one twice. In main phase. Yeah. So this is the reason why you would want to generate additional <clears throat> uh, like tension in main phase. Because you'd want to resolve this and then have an additional two to resolve like double combo. That's like the idea. Yeah. More burns because Ram is so efficient. Wait, is it... Hold on. When this is placed on stage from hand, you can choose a character in the waiting room, add it to hand. It's is this literally just a free drop salvage? Oh, yeah. oh wait, it's a two one. Yeah, it's yeah. a two one, one yeah. Uh yeah. It's just it's like better drop salvage because you don't have to have the card to discard. You take a card, then you discard. 
Yeah, if this was a car that was uh, from like four years ago, that would have a, a pay one, ditch one cost to it. Yeah. You know, we kind of, I, I mentioned this in like the last video we did. Um, with the one yellow card, the Sweet. one uh, Becky. Mm-hmm. The, the Becky card, where it's like, yeah, it's like a back row card that like can. Well, I don't think you back row this. Turn one. Just, this you just... don't even fucking play this in the back row. This card just sucks. Oh, no, I think this card slaps. Wait, this card's insane. Yeah, this card's nutty. Why is this insane? This seems fucking terrible. Because if you have two... Okay, if you're playing Ram and you have two tension already, you only need one tension for your combo. If you have the resources and the card is resource light, you can literally just put four pings on top. Yeah, because Ram costs, like, legit, like, nothing. <laughs> like, and in, like, a, in a set... It, for, even furthermore, in a set without stock swap, precise damage like this is probably the difference <laughs> between winning and losing games. A2, ditch 2, burn 1? Burn 1 twice. Oh, burn 1 twice. Oh, okay. I thought it was just burn 1 a single time. Nope. Burn 1 yeah, twice is You could reasonably nice. resolve this or like this. twice over two turn cycles with how efficient RAM is. I don't think it's super crazy, Ooh. but like because of RAM existing, this card's good. Yeah, it, it needed an efficient those. combo to be paired with so that you could actually afford to tap this thing down. I think the biggest thing with RAM, and I think we've, like, been... We kind of, like, understand it, but we never stated it. Um, Andy mentioned it, but we're in the next video now. RAM, quote-unquote, plusing two by summoning the cards down. Because all she does is pop a card from memory for cost. That's not, like, a card. Like, you know, you get that for free. So, like, you, yeah. do, you do just, like, play the Climax and, like, te you expend the Climax from hand. And technically, you know, like... <laughs> get an additional card out of it. So, like, the fact that you are going positive in cards to play the RAM and help you do stuff like this, and this is quite a payoff. Yeah, you play the Climax, and the Climax gets a memory, then you use the memory. Mm -hmm. So if you have additional memory going into your turn, you can actually use it on this and, like, extend your reach pretty dramatically. Yeah, the double ping is really juicy. And Testament will sculpt you. Like, because it's a free drop salvage. So. You at least have that as well. Yeah, it's good. Alright, next. Uh, I'll hear that. So, John, go ahead. Alright, we got a 3-2 Kai, Mighty King. 10-5. Uh, this card is placed with a hand in the stage. Choose up to one character with level equal to or lower than the level in your hand put it in any position on your stage and this card gets plus 2k power to end a turn uh four put two cards from your hand in the waiting room this ability activates one time per turn if this card's battle opponent becomes reverse you may pay the cost and re-stand wait so this guy just like plays another dude for free yeah right, so it helps it? lower the overhead of playing it with may despite yeah, the re-stand being expensive yeah, so you'd play it with May, and then you you double May the shit out of him. Yeah. Yeah, you can think of it as like pay two, ditch two to restand, sort of, because you save the two on playing a uh, <coughs> playing a like another level three. Yeah, that seems that seems actually kind of okay, but I mean, it's it, good it, with specifically May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally just for May. I like it well enough. I should have put the May on this line with this card, honestly. The only deck you'd play it in, really. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Although, I guess, I guess, I don't know. The spawn effect can be nice, but you'd have to be doing something weird. Probably maybe in a standby deck. Because uh, you can you can stand by this out and still do the effect. So, maybe something with that. Alright, so that was John. Back to Andy. Go ahead. Yep. Oh my god, it's Evil Kai. I guess. He's not evil. He's using dragon install. Yeah, they can both dragon install. Because they're rivals. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, what's cool, me. though? Uh, during your opponent's turn, if your opponent has three or less characters, this gets a level in 1500. So unless they quad field, he is a level 1 3k. 
And when he is put into your waiting room from the stage, you can discard a card, look at top four of your deck for a level one or higher card. We have the um, Chiuri effect. This is a pretty good yes, one. It's probably like a little bit better than a normal Chiuri being up That's a level in pretty... 1500. It's another good opener. Like you I think the level matters down. a lot. The level stops you from getting bombed from all the people that are playing a bunch of zone bombs to hate on Hollow Live. You still get your, uh, you, you more reliably get your, um, your effect because they'll run this over with power usually. It'll die more often normally. Yeah, because it stops slides and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Your opponent yeah. can't side it. Your opponent can't bomb it with a level zero zone bomb, which would get it off the field. So you always. Or not always, but more reliably get your uh, cheery effect off. All right, next. Uh, this card's pretty good. Uh, Testament, Elegant Grim Reaper. If your stock has cheerless cards, this gives 50 gender power and it is a drop search. We like these. Yeah. Oversized well, drop search. Drop the search. fact that there's an oversized drop salvage, yeah. there's an oversized drop search. Um, I think this is probably tough to fit, though, with the Trotic Jacko. I was running the Trotic Jacko as a two of, and then playing this as my primary plusing zero in that slot, but, like, I don't know if that'll work out. Really? The level zero is, really? like, jostling out. Yeah, the, my, my thought process was that when I was looking at the level zero... If I wasn't playing a card like this, I was literally never killing anything at level zero. Like, all my cards were 2k or less with no way to oh. buff. And I was like, oh, I'm never playing for the board at level zero. And I I hate, personally, playing those kinds of decks as a player preference. Like, the decks that just, like, completely concede level zero and play, like, only utility cards. I think they feel <laughs> like... Like, utility cards at clock presses, I think they feel, like, super bad to play, especially in the modern meta, so I didn't want to do that, so I kind of went through it this, but I mean, you just get to shove four drop searches in your deck. Not like a bad thing, you know? Yeah. Good blue fix. Too. Yeah, also fixes you for blue. Alright, next, back to Ollie. Oh, you get this. You're oh, playing, God. you know what? Uh, you switch it with John. John, no, you get no, to read I got, this. I got, I got, you got it. it? You got it? Okay. Got it. That's a lot of All text. Right. It's a 1 0 Faust. It's an assist 500, and you can rest this and put a Guilty Gear character from your memory into, waiting, into a waiting room. Uh, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a climax, you get to put in, choose one character in your opponent's waiting room, put it on top of their deck. If it's a level 0 or lower character, uh, Fuck, I lost my spot. Uh, all your characters get plus 1k until end of turn. If this card is level 1, choose one of your characters, and that character gets plus 4k power until end of turn. If that card is level 2, put the top card of your deck into your clock. If that card is level 3 or higher, put the bomb card of your deck in your stock. Whoever designed this card deserves a raise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is you, so you, amazing. You literally only fail on hitting a level 2, but you have to expend meter to do it. This is this is such a comical card. Like this is this is it is very exactly flavorful. Faust. Yeah, it it's very exactly flavorful. Faust item pool. Is it good? Hell no. But is no. it funny? Yes. Yeah, it's very funny. I'm just gonna give it the funny. If you play this, you are a champion. But um, not a it's good choking. card. No, it's item toss. Yeah, it's it's item toss on a card that, and, but they also made it a character because of how do you make item toss like? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can set it up with some of the top checking effects, like on the one card that, like, re the like the Ricky, you know, Ricky. Yeah, you could peek it a little bit, but like, I don't know. I think this is more for the haha -ha funny. Yeah. Than it is anything. I don't think any of those effects are like that good, but that's cool. All right. Uh, this is John. Go ahead. All right, we got a 1-0 Happy Chaos Trigger Happy. It's 4,500. Um, let's see. When this card is placed on the stage of your hand, you may pay the cost, which is 2, and spend a, a meter. Uh, when you do so, choose a cost 1 or lower character in your opponent's backstage, and you link it to the front. Oh, no, just kill it. Never mind. Yeah, he just shoots it. Oh, just... <laughs> he doesn't just shoot it. fucking shoots them. Damn, yeah. Davis X Machina. Yep. It shoots the bag, bro. 
Um, could be good, could be terrible. Who knows? It's yeah. There's a lot. I I was gonna say against Overlord you could shoot the one one, but against Overlord you could just play Eno and win the game on the spot. Um, yeah, is there any like scary back row? I mean, I guess you can like shoot Soul <laughs> in the mirror. I guess yeah. Eh, I don't think it's very good. No, who? What is it? Who's too much to pay? I think it would. I think it was like one cost. Maybe that'd be too good. Probably. I don't know. Probably would be way too good if it was one. And... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's there. Really, isn't a lot of. Spot this is really the way you have to look at it. Is this is really just pay two, right? Like the the memory pop is like flavor almost to a point because it's so easy to generate and it's like so easy to get back depending on like it, with the way you build your deck, you can easily build your deck to basically always have it. So I, it, it's literally just a pay two. If it was pay one, it'd be way too good. Pay two is probably right, but it also makes the card oh. meh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't consider, like, the no. memory technically free, but, like, I, I understand what you mean. Like, but it's it's way too expensive as it is. There's just, there just isn't spot removal in this game. Yeah. For a reason, yeah. So, like, and, and back row is, like, hard to hit, too. Like, I, I don't know. I, I like the fact that this is just, like, a hard removal and not just, like, a, like drag it forward sort of, like, grappling hook sort of effect. Yeah, it just I like that this it. just, like, kills it. Has to be cost one or lower. They, but like, like, like they don't need like an open spot for you to do anything with it, like a grapple. Mm -hmm. I just realized it says kill. cost and not level. Yeah, it's cost one, so you can oh, kill two, two one assists, one one. one. You can kill two ones. Yeah, oh, okay. you can kill two. I like ones, this yeah. a lot better. It can like, kill basically up. anything except like standby level threes or like level three assists. Okay, that's 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 definitely better, but I still don't know if it's like good. It's tough to fit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It, it is weird. Like, like at two, it seems like it's almost too expensive. Like, pay two, but at pay one, it's too good. Exactly. Pay one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> one and a card probably would have been better for this. But even one and a card. Even still, I, I don't like. I don't like one and a card. Like, I, I think it's like just a weird, like hard to balance. Yeah. Like, one's too few. Two's too much. Because you, you should have to pay more than your opponent puts to put the card down to kill a back row. Um, I, I think but this is also just a straight plus. Yeah, this is also just, yeah. You can just kill your opponent's card. Maybe maybe it could be good. Maybe it could be good. I could see myself tacking this to try it. In a very directed meta, I think it could be good, yeah. All right, next card. Back to Andy. Yep. We got Happy Chaos Tome of Origin. Uh, fuck me. This card can't be played from... This card can be played from your hand uh, without color requirement. Uh, when you play it from your hand, you can discard a card to search your deck for an Asuka gear maker. Reveal it to your opponent. Put it in your hand. Um, and then act ability. Sacrifice this card and Asuka gear maker. Choose uh, Eno crushing power in your waiting room, put it on the field. Okay, so this is how you early play that. So on play, you can discard to search for the counter, and then... You sack this in the counter you can to bring out sack the, the counter and this to early play. And then the early play uh, hmm. immediately grabs the climax from waiting room. So you... But you're going to play the climax on that turn, so I don't want to think of that as like... And you're not going to get a card back. So it's still a minus. I, two. I like that the I like that the counter is part of it because like you run a lot of those and you're just defending stuff anyway with it. That's kind of nice. Um, I don't really care for the two one though, and I don't think the three two combo is really like worth jumping through the hoops for. No, I don't. I think this you is, hit the nail on the head. It's not worth the hoops. This is like way too overcomplicated for like such an easy thing. Yeah. It's not even that complicated, just like, yeah. Just weird. It's Why? flavor. It is flavor, but... Yeah. I think if you play with... Suck on White Schwartz. I just want to turn cards sideways. There's too many words to read. Too many words. Lots Give me blanks. All right, next card. Kai, Righteous Ruler. It's a global five, and when you trigger a pants, you can discard any card to look at the top two cards in your deck and choose a card <laughs> you want to put in your hand, put it in the waiting room. 
It's the same shitty pants support that gets printed all the time that no one ever plays because it's not Spriggan. Oh. But Spriggan's too broken, so they'll never print Spriggan again. There's not even that much pants in this set. There's like the nope. level one combo. There's just and then Kai's. there's the trial back combo. Kai, where's the pants? Oh, he does wear, wear the, the pants. pants. Yeah, that's it. Maybe, maybe an eight pants. I don't know. Even then, you don't really play these. It just, it's just not good. All right, next, Ollie, more Faust. Uh, we got this level zero Faust. What is placed from stage of hand? Choose a character your opponent center stage that gets minus five hundred power and Afro until end of turn. And then when this is put in your waiting room from stage, you have one of those cards to memory. You may choose one of this or the one zero Faust in your waiting room. And put it to memory. It's a minus five. Is that what he's hiding under play? the? Is that what he's hiding under the bag? Is an Afro? Yeah, it's 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 also a flavor. It's an item. This is really bad. This is just a minus five hundred power. Like the, <laughs> th there's a couple of these enabler cards where they have done like really weird angle shooty effects. Like, and I think the Eno Blinker was as far down as I'm willing to go for these. This is like, this is like four steps below <clears throat> that card. Minus five hundred power only. The only a character in center stage. Yeah, but you give him Afro. You do give him Afro. It's worth a lot. Uh you can, but you buff Ash from KO up with that. You should, um, <laughs> you should, uh, there should have been a card where if a character has Afro trait, you get to like dunk it or something. That would have been funny. Yeah, that you would have been jump even in. more flareable. All right, next card. Uh, John, go ahead. All right, you get a 1 1 happy chaos to start humanity is 2400. And it's played for this. Stage from your hand, if you have one or less card memory, you can choose, like, go to your character in your waiting room, pop into your meter. When it comes to first, uh -oh. the level of this card, this opponent is higher than opponent's level, you may bottom deck it. So, uh, anti-change, bottom decker, pretty good. Just generically, right? I mean, this is, like, exactly the Adachi you'd expect to see in this set. Yep. It gives you the meter. It's, yep. it's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I, you can play it. It's, it's a playable card. Like, that's all you really need. All right. Next. Back to Andy. All right. I got Testament. Graceful victory. I'd say it's time for a tea break. When this card attacks, choose one of your other Guilty Gear characters and give them X power. Equal the number of Guilty Gears you have times 500. Number of others. <clears throat> She only pumps other. So on attack, pump another character 2k on a full field. Uh, on attack, all your characters get the following ability until end of turn, including yourself. Uh, when this card's trigger check reveals a climax, you can send a climax from your hand to waiting room to salvage. Yeah, this is like Interesting those... that it gives it to itself, too. So you just swing with this first and your whole field gets it. Yeah, this is like the, the new type of... Um, like filters climax filters that attack and this one's like the generalized one so you gotta ditch climax but i mean if you trigger bar or pants which is probably what you play this with you can pick up anything so uh yeah, i think it's fine i like that it's generalized nice too, yeah i like that it's general <clears throat> a lot of really good like tacky cards in this set stuff like this it's like not yep really like Terribly impressive, but it's like just very, very solid utility cards. That like, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't expect people to play this, but like if I saw someone play this, I wouldn't be surprised either. All you the cards I mean? do something. It's like a perfectly the reasonable card. There are so few like literal trash cards that we've seen, um, which is good. All right, we got sibling succubi of testament. Uh, if you have two or more of the guilty gear characters, it gets two k. 9-5. Then beginning of your opponent's attack phase, you may put a climax from your hand in the waiting room. If you do, choose this card and one of your other Guilty Gear characters and exchange them as stand. If your memory has one or less card, choose up to one Testament Beautiful Gear or a Sibling Succubi of Testament, which is this card, in your waiting room and put it into your memory. So it can stand and swap with a card for discard a climax and then charge your meter. I mm. don't think that is a good enough evasive ability, but this is a 2-2. Two, two. It swings for two soul. 
maybe it can help you protect something else if you're playing like i mean the idea is you play this with standby um but i don't know it doesn't fit in any deck i'm thinking of it's, it's, it's probably just... better than it reads it it, it, it is an evasive it, it is a it is a way to switch something you stand by in from the back oh. row to the front um Congrats. as well as this... protect something so i'm sure it's better than it reads but i just don't know what you use it with this card of climax is like a bit specific for that especially in a standby deck where you want to be slamming them yep um i'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt because i've seen <sighs> cards that and swap cards to front roads. Standby strategies be good. Uh, but maybe not this one. All right. Ollie, get the dragon install. Uh, hold on a minute. Oh. Ring. There you go. All right. Uh, three zero. Uh, choose one of your characters with Kai in his card name. The character has 3k power in the volume by the end of turn. When this card's battle opponent goes to reverse, we deal one damage to your opponent. That's dragon install? Yep. yep. Burn one. Yeah, it sucks, just like dragon install. It really does. It's flavor. And just, just to confirm, this uh, does not stat... Like, if, if you restand oh. a character... No, they don't. You can only reverse, reverse them once per turn, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty crap. That's legit dog water. <laughs> it's like di if you have the reverse on lock, it's like ditch one, burn one. It's like not actually that bad, but it reads so I guess whatever. like if everything's like hand, hand costed, but I mean, it's just like a brick that sits in your hand till the end and like yeah, it doesn't look like the there's problem. any way to search them. Yeah. Yeah, there's no You can just hoard this, them in your hand. But... Nope. No monitor. <sighs> and it has to only go on a Kai, so it, like, you yep. have to be playing a Kai finisher. Woof. Like, card economy-wise, if you have that reverse unlock, which at the amount of power you can pump these Kais, I sure to God fucking hope so. If you put this on the TD1, that's 17k. Um, so I sure hope that you have that reverse unlock at 17k. Uh, so the card economy on that really isn't that bad. It is ditch one, burn one, but you have to do it up front, and this is a dead brick that does nothing the rest of the game. Um... The running ditch one burn ones at the cost of deck slots is pretty bad. Yeah, it's... I think it only gets impressive if you like jam multiple dragon installs on the same turn. But then it's like you're just hold, holding these dragon installs. Yeah, you're playing garbage cards in your deck. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're <laughs> you just can't attack with cards. it. It has to do something. Yeah, the, the it's events. Such a shame. It so sounds good. like such a sounds like such a powerful like. Like name and like Dragon such a good soul. art. Oh, you should see it in the game. It's just as underwhelming. Uh, <laughs> it, it's better now. Excuse yeah, you. Slightly better. Yeah. It's usable now. Yeah. All right. It's funny in Exit though. This is the blue version of the green event. Um, it's, it's called no answer. They're really yeah. hating Strive, bro. Put answer mm -hmm. in Strive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no answer. No answer. But yeah, we already rated these. It's it's worse than the restand event. Yeah, but it's whatever. probably fine. You just don't have a defensive payoff in this set. This is definitely a kill em set. Uh, all right. Lightning round PRs. There's a lot of them. Uh, they're all SD cards, so they oh, have that cute is custom adorable. art. Yep. This SD like May the two best and characters. Faust. Uh, this card gets 2,000 power for each marker underneath this card. This card is placed on the stage from your hand. Gets plus X power until end of turn. X equal number of guilty carries you have times 500 which is including itself so it's 25 then when you get reversed you look at the top card of your deck and if you looked at it you got to jam it underneath as a marker um these historically are never good nope that's cute but when they steamroll they're really funny art. yeah it is they're they're all like this they're all adorable uh <laughs> one zero sd rg and a chip uh one zero five k Card gets 500 power for each climax in your waiting room. <coughs> when this card is frontal attacked, kill this card. This is the worst card I think I've read in my entire fucking Yeah, it's life. really bad. It's worse than Anji. Yeah, this is really bad. <laughs> oh, wow. It can hold board if you have like, all your cards. Yeah, yeah. And then you just, you just oh, get wait. attacked and then it dies. All right, SD, Nago, and Potemkin. If you have two or more other Guilty Gear characters, this card gets 1,500 power, and during this card's battle, you cannot receive burn damage from auto effects. 
And when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, all of your characters get 3k. It's a 3-2. <laughs> cool? <laughs> you have the Hexproof Assist. You have no reason to, like... Well, I guess the burn thing is, like, mm. I don't know. It's like it's like cool, dude. It. It's like cool story. It's like cool story, bro. Like that's what this card is. I don't. I don't care. I think you'd play it for like the. the yeah, 3, a lot of what's down here. Matters, John. Yeah. A lot of what's down here. The next card is also a what. Um, Geo and Gold Lewis. This ability activates up to one time per turn. When this card becomes rested from standing choose one of your characters and give a 500 power this ability activates <laughs> up to one time per turn when this card becomes reverse in battle choose up to two of your characters and they get hand on core till end of turn this ability activates up to one time per turn when this card could stand from rested look at the top card of your deck put it on top oh. of your deck or into your waiting room so that so... Uh, that would go off before <laughs> your draw i think they could have just said in this behemoth typhoon and this was the perfect card <laughs> yeah because that's what this is <laughs> it's, it's it's funny it's, yeah that, it's, yeah, that really would be funny. before your would that be before your draw yeah because you un you untap before draw in one it's kind of interesting card becomes tap from standing yeah, spin. your characters spin time. <laughs> that's it that's a power. yeah here we go we make the circle we go all the way around I do think the middle effect is like suscept like deceptively very good actually. Like this card is in your chump lane and your opponent runs it over and you can save your other two lanes. There's potential here. I use the P word this time. I'm capable of using it. I love that uh, art. I just look at him slicking back his head. Oh yeah. The, dude, all the <laughs> SD cards are incredible. Holy moly. I, I think the double on court <laughs> could actually be used. Also, if you read, if you you can time out uh, your opponent legally by uh, forcing your opponent to read this card um, <laughs> and make sense of what it does. Uh, Tress has made that joke, yeah. and I also have to make that joke. I think that was Simu who made that. <laughs> Whoever made it, funny joke. So I reused it. I stole it. Um, but if we're far enough in the video, no one will ever know. Uh, SD Million Zato. Uh, when this place on stage of your hand, look at the two cards on top of your opponent's deck and put them back in the original order. Boo! Can't move them, can't rearrange them. Boo! Uh, and choose what character in your opponent's center stage uh, gets minus 1,000 power. You can pay one huh. to do that as many times as you want. You can do it forever. You can kill anything. Infinite power. This card sucks. <laughs> it doesn't do what? <laughs> Yeah, they're all like this. Yeah. They're all, they're like all this comically genre. bad. Yeah, they, well, they're not even. They're not even bad. Some of them are. This is funny. Some of them are. Yeah, they're all funny. All right, we got Ram and Biken. Uh, when this card is placed on stage from your hand, you can discard a card, and if you do, choose a level one, zero, or lower character in your waiting room. Put it in any position on your stage. Um, you the card you discarded. The spawners are fine, but I don't know what you use it for in this set. But, like, I don't know. Level zero spawners can be okay. We have cost zero spawners now. I guess they realized that those were too broken and they weren't going to print those again. <coughs> All right. Next. Oh, this one. Oh, this wasn't. This isn't the super funny one. We're getting there. Uh, SD Soul, Jacko, and Axel. At the beginning of your climax phase, you can pay one discard a card. If you do, choose one of your opponent's characters, move it to an open position of their stage, and this gets 1K. So it's a grappling hook. When this card is front attack, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a climax, return all of your characters in your center stage to your hand. <laughs> and then you can act tap this card, choose one of your characters, it gets plus one level and a thousand power, and that this card cannot stand during your next stand phase. <laughs> There's so many words that make me... Hold on. And this is frontal attack, reveal top card. If it's a climax, return all your characters to your hand, in center stage to hand. That's not actually a terrible effect. That's not bad. Yep. Like, if your field's getting run over on the way back and they swing into this, you could, like, plus three. You could, but it's just like, like, like a, your whole field could just pop back to your It's hand. just <laughs> an insane coin flip. It's just more of a funny I than guess, functional yeah. card, yeah. Choose one of your characters that gets a level 1,000 power that this card can't stand. The first effect's not... The grappling hook's not bad. Nope. I like The full field, field coin flip's hook. not bad. It's not the worst thing ever. All right, next. 2-1. Uh, SD, Eno, and Happy Chaos. If you have four or more Guilty Gear characters, this card gets minus one level in your hand. So it is a 2-1 uh, you can early play. 
at the beginning of the attack phase, you can pay to ditch you and tap this. If this card is in your center stage, you may pay the cost. If you do, deal two damage to your opponent two times and put one card from the top of your clock into your waiting room. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you can just burn two twice at level one. And heal. And heal. And heal? For the low, low pay cost of two. pay to ditch two. And this card doesn't attack. So you get two attacks that turn, and then you go down two stock. But and it this does push damage. This isn't actually, like, terrible. No, it's not. It, the scary you part You don't have is to do it at level one. No. Nope. Yeah. It could just be a card that you throw in your deck, and you, like, just get an extra swing in endgame. Yeah. It's, it's I think it's fine. Worse. It's cool. It's just really <laughs> expensive. Yeah. All right, getting through them here. SD, Kai, and Leo. Uh, when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you may return two characters from your waiting room to your deck and shuffle your deck. If you do, this card's soul does not decrease by side attacking. And when this card attacks, choose one of your guilty gear characters and give it 1,500 power until end of turn. Shuffle backs can is be it... cool, but I don't think you have a way to That's, abuse yeah. them in this deck. But, I mean, they're, it exists, so if you ever get a way to abuse them. I don't here. think it's an abusable card, but it's just like a nice, two nice effects on one card, just like a nice little utility card. Yeah. Being able to like always side attack for free and like keep your spot on field and just like spot power anywhere. If I needed like a blue fix and like also some power pump, I'd consider playing this. Last but not least <laughs> for the box toppers, we have SD Testament. When this card is placed on the station in your hand, reveal the top card of your deck, and this card gets plus X soul until end of turn. X is equal to the level of the revealed card. What? Okay. And when this card's battle opponent becomes reverse, if your stock has three or less cards, you may put the top you may put that character on top of your opponent's deck. What? Wait. It can just attack it like a four soul? If you see yeah, if you see a level three on top of your deck, you could just toss this down. Toss down three, dude. Pay out all your stock. Oh, is that was three. Swing four, four, four. Top deck your opponent's cards. Insane. Damage you can also wins rearrange games. two of them. So Damage like... wins games. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't I, even I think, think it's bad. That's the wrong way to look at. I, I think, I think it's okay. I think yeah. it's actually like to set. You can set up some nice side attacks with this too. Like yeah, either like can. get a nice big damage push for free for no fucking reason, or like with like top deck like manipulation, you can set whatever you want on top. Like pump this up to like four souls. Swing with like a climax down at like five, and then like have a side attack. To, like, this card is I mean? a nightmare on first deck. If my opponent reveals a level three, and they swing with this, and then they swing for five, and I just eat it. Like one hundred percent, see that happening. From and, like removing their card on field two. I mean, that even has applications against like Hall Alive, let's say, right, or like Seven Deadly, right? Where yeah. it's like, okay, you hit one first, you swing this into their um. A card that like on reverse, you know what I mean? Like the uh, yeah, no, the on death rickies. Get them off the field. I'm gonna hit somebody so with 15 with this. Them. I think it's actually pretty good. I want to go out on a ledge and say this is like actually solid, especially like with the first deck variants. Like you could definitely smack someone for five with this card, and like <laughs> put their card on top of the deck for the next swing. Yeah, yeah like like early early game again, either like clearing some of those sticky level zeros. That are going to plus your opponent, or just like getting a huge chunk of damage for no fucking reason. But then also the utility late game to like have side attacks. Yeah, or just it reveals your top card too. Like you just get a top oh, peak. Fuck, does it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it does it? Yeah, it does reveal yeah, top for free too. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of guns. You know what? I talked myself up. This card's pretty good. I like this yeah. card. Imagine trialing this and just killing your opponent. Oh, yeah, that's the nightmare. You just, like, drop down three of this, and you reveal level three, and you swing, like, five, four, four without a climax. Or the climax down six, five, five. And it all sticks, and you lose. And it all sticks, and you lose level one. Seen it happen. All right. Uh, this is the PR from if you went to uh, all the, uh, what is it? All the, the, the events where Bushi rode on the road. That's what I was looking for. You got this PR. I think it went out to stores as well, but it's a vanilla. It doesn't do anything else. It's a cool, uh, cool art. It is really cool art. But more importantly, this is the shop promo uh, for, I believe, this month. This card is actually like completely reasonable if you're just getting into the game. On will enhance your trial deck. It is a two or less climax early play. 
Uh, if you don't have another character, it can't stand, but that drawback doesn't really matter. And then on play, you can top check three, add a card. So it's like the perfect card where you come into locals, grab your, uh, grab your TDs, start playing, and like the shop will actually just hand you this for playing, and you can immediately put it in your deck, and it immediately makes your deck better. <coughs> if if we're if we're gonna have promos that don't really do anything, um, like for the set at large, they should at least do this. I think this is actually perfect for a shop entry PR, and this is what they should be doing. Um, instead of printing like. You can always use promos to like fill holes in sets or like things that sets are actually missing. Um, but then, you know, promos become hard to find. They become expensive or whatever. This is another way to do it. And I actually really like this. If you put a single copy of this into a trial deck, you have made the trial deck much, much better um, because it actually gives them something to do at level two, which is where trial decks blow ass. Um, so I think this is really, really cool that they made this. Stylistically, I like it too. Like it has oh, a yeah, unique art's great. art style from the rest of the set, which makes mm -hmm. it like another good like promo card. All yeah, right, well that's cool. Guilty Gear. That's everything. Uh, Ram is top tier in the game and in real life. You can never escape. Um, that's what we learn. Uh, but overall, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the set? I think Guilty Gear looks. It might not be, like, the best deck ever, but I think it will have its own niche. It will definitely be pretty good because the card individual card power is pretty high. Uh, and I think, more importantly, it will be very unique and fun to play. Um, I think out of, like, all the English exclusives we've gotten so far, this one seems like the most... Like a real set. Competent overall. I don't know if it's like going to be stronger than Adventure Time necessarily. Adventure Time was like really carried like in by its Finn time. And Joe, though, I think in its time, yeah. I'll like, put it this way: I'm like I'm going to Ruby mean. had pretty good card quality, but like nothing else to like like do at the top end. I'm going to be like, mean, man, but like, what do you think? The Tabushi Road, <laughs> but well, okay. I'm going to give the major fucking props for Guilty Gear because I think this is the best they've ever done with an English exclusive, both in power line and more importantly, in flavor. Other English exclusives have had flavor and have had nods to their property. But at the end of the day, I think every single English exclusive we've got up till now, at a certain point when you're going through the set, reads like dolphin, like manatee cards, which are cards with random ass effects that don't make any sense uh, jammed together on a card, just like the Family Guy skit. Um, <laughs> or, yeah, j just like the South Park skit about Family Guy. Um, it's the same, like, just like that, but with an anime screen cap from whatever it was, whether it was Batman Ninja or Adventure Time or Ruby. Every single one of those sets is like laden with cards like that. How many cards like that did we honestly see going through the set review? And we went through every card, which we haven't been doing. How many cards did we really yeah. see like that where there was almost no flavor? Maybe, yeah. maybe like, fifth, like 15 at most, right? Like overall, ED plus the set. Yeah, they, yeah like there's a bunch of cards that are just like so cool. Like even though like obviously they did something like there's like the quote unquote flavor cards, but even though the cards are just like good. They all have the meter mechanic, which alone is like amazing to me. I love yeah, that so the, much. They, that is the fact that they literally nailed it. The second you realize, why doesn't the memory go past two? And then you see what you cash out the effects for. And if you know anything about a fighting game, you go, oh, that's meter. Like instantly. You know what I mean? Like that is, uh, that, that's, that's literally meter. Like, I don't know. I read through this set and I read through the cards and I go, wow. They actually cared about this property and did it justice. <laughs> and I don't think I can actually say that for the rest of the English exclusive they've made up till now. That to a certain point, they did an okay job with most of them um, in certain ways. I think that I, I, like, get, I get what you mean. Like, yeah, but like I, it, I think yeah. the I think the most flavorful other like English set was Ruby, probably up to this point. Maybe think, Mob Psycho. I, I, think, I thought, yeah. but, I, I, but I, I personally know a lot about Ruby, right? I'm a big fan of the show. I've seen the whole thing. But it is like you said, it, like half the cards were like really flavorful. But then when you get into like the commons and the uncommons, it is just like. It, it's just like screen caps of like random one off characters, and they just put like 
uh, effect that has like nothing to do with them on the card. Or even with even like the throwaway common cards in this set, like one, like the power level on everything is still pretty good. Like we were saying, like as when we were getting near the end, like even like uh, you know, like there's a lot of like C plus cards. You know what I mean? Stuff that's like. Yeah, you're probably not going to see it in a deck, but it's, like, perfectly reasonable to include if you need it sort of thing, right? Like, there's a lot of, like, flexible tech cards that could realistically see play. But even on, like, the commons and uncommons, they're still, like, taking the time to make them flavorful cards. And, like... Yeah, it feels like the care. Making nods to, like, the characters. Yeah. Like, after a certain point, I think, with... I think with Ruby, they did a passable job. I, and as I think they did, for the time, they did a good job trying to make something unique for the time that was on power line, or at least close to power line for the time. And they did an okay job on flavor. I, I gave Ruby a pass. Um, I think Avatar, I, this is like my personal bias. I think that set is, a, I think that set's a fucking garbage fire i think that sets a travesty um but uh other people like it and it's just gura and sheep's clothing i don't think, like, I don't think it was that like it, it wasn't really that flavorful though it, but that's the thing I that's what i was gonna was say avatar had like less flavorful cards than ruby and i think that alone is a failure like after a certain point but i don't know man something about these cards i think everybody could feel it while we were going through it feels like they really cared about this one it shows it shows we can see it and we're happy about it. So good job, Bushiroad. And we just keep at it. Keep doing this. Keep doing this. Like who, whoever this guy is who really cares about this property or this person, go find the person in your office that actually cares about the property the most and have them be part of the team that helps make the cards. Because that's obviously what you did here. You had somebody who freaking plays fighting games. Absolutely. At least you had somebody on this. Like every single person in here, <laughs> even Andy to a point, has played like fighting games, like to a point, has played them, has touched them. Yeah. Like we can all say that we can all tell that someone who plays fighting games and is fairly invested in them had a hand in making this set. And I can't say the same for the other sets for where it's apt because I can't tell that the per that a person who likes Avatar made the Avatar set. I could kind of tell that somebody who uh, liked Ruby helped on the Ruby set, but for stuff like Batman Ninja, um, I don't even think you guys watched Batman Ninja. Is if you watched it, you wouldn't have made a set on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, it, it, we could, movie. And it's like I don't know, like Mob Psycho Adventure Time. I, I don't think they actually know <laughs> anything about the properties for those series either. Um, like Adventure Time turned out okay in terms of power, but like. Do they actually know anything about Adventure Time when they made it? They just kind of made cards, put stuff on here. These feel like this is a Guilty Gear set, a card game, and that is a big win. Good fucking job, Bushiroad. A plus. Yeah, very happy, considering it's a series I care so much about. Yeah, so that, that always feels good. Well, they got my ass again. They keep announcing all this other stuff. Like, they got... um. Card capture and well, this is in JP. Card capture anniversary and Veroni Kenshin. And I saw Veroni Kenshin. Yeah, it's like child, oh, wow. childhood. Oh, yeah. Me is is fucking like, I'm I'm a I'm the happiest boy in the world. That's card the shit capture, I grew up with. Card capture rewatch party one. That'd be it'd cool. be a long rewatch party. You have to we'll schedule it out. All right, but I think that's it. Uh, Ollie, John, you guys got anything to say in the close? You can shout out anything you want. Um, I will say, like what Carmen said too. Like I know friends that play card games and fighting games um, because I've suckered all of them to playing other card games that I play fighting games with. And the second I show them the meter mechanic for this set, they're gonna lose it. And so, like, I wanted to really say thank you, Bushiro, for making such a funny set um, in like the best possible way. That really like brings out the character of like the the property hell yeah all you got anything i'm just i'm really excited that this set exists like guilty gear is literally my favorite like fighting game series of all time and i'm happy that this set is good and i'm happy that it's flavorful they nailed it i mean especially guilty gear 2 um 
the thing about Guilty Gear is it has this very distinctive style. And um, you, <clears throat> doing it, not doing it justice was not an option. They, the cards had to look like Guilty Gear. The cards look like Guilty Gear. They got there. And that was like one of the most important things. I think they they have to exude that that like very specific Guilty Gear style, and uh, they got there mostly due in part to uh, Hungry Clicker drawing a bunch yeah. of cards. Oh, we'll follow um, them. Yeah, very good, very good. All right, uh, upcoming content, other stuff, more set reviews. I gotta go look. What what do we even got in the chamber, man? We're like near in the end. We're finally getting caught up, and then they'll announce a bunch of new shit and set us back. Uh, we did Chainsaw Man. We did Spy Family. We still have to do Like a Reco. Um, there's Bang Dream, Psychono uh, Finale, Like a Reco, uh, Bochi, and Dengeki Bunko, which is actually wild. I I cannot believe that's coming to English. That is like the a total out of left field insane shit. Um, did they just announce that recently? Yeah, Dengeki Bunko 30th anniversary is coming up in <laughs> English. How? Um, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, that was what I said. I also said how. <laughs> I said, how'd you lock down that one? And then Ruby Premium Booster. Ruby Premium Booster. Oh, that's going to be uh, cool. Ruby Premium Booster should be I'm hyped for that. because they can, pull, they can pull art from literally anywhere. Like, just be, don't be fooled. Just because it has uh, Volume 4 as, like, the art here, it's probably not going to be stuff just from Volume 4. It's going to be from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully the cards will look a little better. Premium boosters regularly, from what we have seen, um, <laughs> use a lot of promotional and special art for their cards. Like, you can go look at some of the stuff from Shauna um, or some of the recent premium boosters. Uh, very, very pretty handsome cards. And everything in the set will come foil, uh, which will be nice. Uh, probably not for Andy. Probably hurt Andy. It'll hurt his wallet. Um, but um, maybe, but, they, but I've, it will I've given be up on the max, the max dream there. But yeah, yeah. So stuff to look forward to. Uh, we'll definitely do some guilty gear, uh, guilty gear deck English pros. Um, probably a multi. I'm excited video. for that. I gotta, I gotta get in and brew some stuff up. Um, there's a lot of cool things to be, uh, to be explored. But with that, Pittsburgh Weisschwartz signing off. We will see you all in the next one. <laughs>